charcot's joint is a severely and rapidly destructive joint disease uh, because of various causes which causes loss of sensation in the joints now various causes are present here the the causes depend on the location of the joint involvement now involvement of the shoulder joint specifically bilateral shoulder involvement in the charcot joint suggestive of syringomyelia and involvement of the wrist joint which is less common can be again seen in the uh, syringomyelia as well as diabetic neuropathy now involvement of the spinal cord involvement of the spinal cord is usually uh, seen uh, with the spinal cord transaction or uh, tapes uh, infection now oh, involvement of the knee joint involvement of the foot involvement of the hips can also be seen in the tapes uh, other than that the involvement of the knee is uh, uh, in, uh, happens when there is congenital insensitivity to pain and involvement of the foot is usually seen again with the diabetes mellitus patient uh, so like this when uh, based on the location the cause can be uh, defined distension destruction debris and dislocation are the classical uh, features that we see in the charcoal joint in this image a t1 weighted uh, mri image what we can see is that uh, it is a diabetic charcoal joint because ankle is involved ankle is more commonly involved in a diabetic uh, patient because of diabetic neuropathy a charcoal joint uh, in this image we can see that the naviculum and the cuneiform area we can see that there is high point tense areas uh, involving the bone also we can see that the plantar soft tissue is showing high point intensity along with that uh, even uh, the adjacent bone that is the cuboid is also showing some high point tense area such confluent high point intensities on t1 weighted image uh, is a uh, classical of uh, uh, osteomyelitis in a uh, in a patient with charcot joint usually charcot joint will be coexisting with the osteomyelitis so if there is confluent prominent hypointense area uh, then it suggests of osteomyelitis which is developing but if there is hazy reticuloid type of hypointense area then it is suggesting uh, towards the charcot joint the other features which suggest towards osteomyelitis includes the debris more number of debris are usually seen in charcot joint the debris uh, the amount of debris reduce uh, as the infection sets in both uh, charcot joint alone also will show enhancement and even uh, osteomyelitis show uh, enhancement so it will not help us to differentiate so in the same patient uh, when the t uh, stir image was done we can see some linear uh, lucencies seen in the uh, talus that previously also we could see some high point density which uh, in the high t1 weighted image in the talus now this in the t stir image suggests that there is in some insufficiency fracture and talus is most common site of uh, insufficiency of fracture and uh, the tarsal bones are the most common sites for the osteonecrosis in the diabetes mellitus so tarsal uh, talus show insufficiency fracture uh, the tarsal bones show osteonecrosis now that's the same thing when you do contrast enhanced image we can see that there is no enhancement in the wedge shaped area uh, in the talus suggesting that there is osteonecrosis there is an insufficiency fracture there is an osteonecrosis also we can see a sinus formation on contrast enhanced image uh, uh, confirming the osteomyelitis uh, in this patient so in this image what we are seeing is that there is a destruction in the metatarsal bones the head of the metatarsal confirmed by the ct images and all the slight swelling in the swelling at the meta uh tarsal metatarsal joints uh, so these are again one more case of the uh, charcoal joint now, this is the case of the charcoal joint in which we can see insufficiency fracture evolution insufficiency fracture because of the calcaneum also if you see the uh talonavicular joint there is slight concavity here with some sclerosis in the bones we can see but two uh, two months later the same patient will develop some uh 
tal destruction at the talonavicular joint with some distended uh, joint cavity with some debris uh, can be seen in this patient. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is how a charcoal joint progresses, which includes uh, destruction, debris, uh, dislocation, uh, and distension. In this contrast enhanced image, we can see there are some uh, debris. Uh, sorry, there are some collections uh, with uh, some debris within uh, around the joint. Also, we can see that there is uh, uh, some enhancement within. Uh, the, the distal end of the uh, tibia same thing is seen even in the axial image we can see uh, multiple collections uh, around uh, the the ankle joint in the soft tissue as well as uh, around the tendon uh, sheets we can see some amount of collections present so this shoulder joint is again showing that subacromial bursa is distended with some debris inside it and also the destruction of the uh, the head of the humerus MRI is showing uh, syringomyelia within so which is a cause of a neuropathic joint uh, uh, or the charcoal joint in the shoulder this is a neuropathic joint that we are seeing in a paraplegic patient uh, in the paraplegic patient uh, there will be uh, charcoal joint of the vertebral bodies here we can see there is continuous two level of end plate destruction of uh, the vertebral bodies which has happened uh, because of the neuropathic joint or the charcoal joint in a paraplegic patient